welcome to Crossing Ken and the Crossing Ken Garage. We've got a great episode that we're so excited to bring you today. Yes, sir. I'm Kristen. I'm Randy. And today we are returning to our ongoing series, Let's Recast It. Um, to check out our two previous videos in this series, check the card up here somewhere. Today's movie is Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. But before we unpack Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, let's explain just in case you're brand new to the Crossing King Garage, what in the world are we talking about? We've got iconic films, a list of iconic films that we really never want to see remade. Please, Hollywood, don't do it. Just don't. I mean, they don't need it. Uh, a lot of times the remake is never as good as the original go back and reference our cover band conversation. So, <laughs> but here today we get to preview an incredible film from my childhood, uh, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. There's some really, really neat trivia too that we want to share with you as we proceed further. Again, we don't want to see Chitty Chitty Bang Bang remade. No, there's no point in it um, because it's Perfect as it is. Mm -hmm. Even with Dick Van Dyke really not pulling off the whole British... Never mind. Okay. Yeah. Conversation for another <laughs> nice. day. Go ahead. A little bit of trivia about Chitty Chitty Bang Bang before we get into the film is that it is actually based on a book by, by Ian Fleming, now, the writer of James Bond. This is not where the Bond trivia stops either with regards to Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. <laughs> so... Roll on. Roll on. Roll on. All right. So, the way Let's Recast It work, as Dad explains, we are going to take modern day actors and put them into the roles originated in the original film. And um, to start, Dad. Well, before we get started, I, I do want to go into explore the Bond <laughs> just connections that are just multitude in this film. First of all, it's produced by Albert Broccoli. Yes, Eon Productions. Before Eon Productions. Everything or nothing is what that stands for. Albert Broccoli bought the film rights to be able to do Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. But, wait, there's more. Not only that, but so many of the production team from the James Bond films. Now, you have to remember, there were only like two films in the James Bond series and franchise at this time. But they brought over a lot of the, the team, the creative team, from the Bond franchise to do this. And if you look really closely, you might recognize your favorite Bond invention maker as the car salesman. He's not one of the roles we're recasting, but we do see other Bond faces in, we do. as we go along. Absolutely. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang is the first Bond car. Let's just be real. It's, it's, it's well, a Bond car It's anyway. one of the original <laughs> Bond cars. The Aston Martin will always be the Bond car. But, right. but as we go forward, we'll explain a little bit about some of the characters that show up and the actors who played them that continue to have connections with James Bond. So... All right, Daddy, kick us off. Who is our first? First is Caractacus Potts, played so beautifully by Dick Van Dyke. Even though he didn't have the accent that everybody was hoping he would, he really didn't do a great job of it in Mary Poppins, so I don't think he really bothers that much in no, Chitty Chitty didn't. Bang Bang. He so, didn't. Caractacus Potts is the father of two children, and he is this inventor, a cracked pot so to speak. Wah, wah. Yeah, to continue playing on the name game that the Bond films so beautifully do. I'm just one step after the other. Connection, <laughs> connection. <laughs> Love it. Okay, so, Caractacus Potts is an inventor, and he has these inventions that, shall we say, well, don't work that great. They don't work that great. I will make, as an aside, the Mid-America Museum here in Arkansas in Hot Springs, Arkansas, has one of the props from the original Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. It's the vacuum cleaner, I believe, mm -hmm. from the Chitty Chitty Bang Bang movie. So if you're in Arkansas, if you're in Hot Springs specifically, make sure you make a trip to the Mid-America Museum and see this bit of movie trivia. There's a lot of other great exhibits there too, but for sure go see the uh, vacuum cleaner from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang at the Mid-America Museum. Well, let's continue on. Caractacus Pot Potts Played beautifully by Dick Van Dyke. I have Hugh Jackman in the role. 
Now, there's a couple of reasons I do this. Well, the biggest one is the greatest showman. Wow. Why else? I mean, <laughs> Hugh Jackman has been a Broadway staple for, for several years. That's where he got his start. He, he has done Oklahoma, and he's done, well, the greatest showman Broadway version. And he is uh, also on Broadway now in The Music Man. I think that just ended because he's having to go and film Deadpool 3. But, right. But, um, yes, he's been in The Music Man for the last two years, I believe. Right. So he has the musical chops. Um, I can very, very easily see him doing the uh, circus uh, dancing with Meal <laughs> Bamboo uh, and, and so on. And he has the accent to pull it off. <laughs> So Hugh Jackman is my choice for Caractacus Potts. He'd have to posh it up just a little bit to sound British. He would. He's an Aussie. He but, would. But you're not wrong. Hugh, he would be a good choice. He already starts ahead of Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> Stop making me to Dick Van Dyke. 91 year old Dick Van Dyke just was most recently seen on The, the Masked, Masked Singer. Singer. So get a chance. Go uh, go Bing that or YouTube that or, or whatever and... Uh, it, it's a really, really neat little little clip. All right. So I've actually skewed just a little bit younger for my cast, but I have also chosen a Broadway alum as my Caractacus Potts. I went with Daniel Radcliffe, uh, most famous, obviously, for the Harry Potter franchise. Um, but what some of you may not know is that he has also done Broadway work. He was in How to Succeed in Business Without Even Trying. Wow, great musical. Um, I don't remember how many years ago it was, but I remember seeing him on the Macy's Day Parade and texting a friend of mine, Daniel Radcliffe is on the Macy's Day Parade. Did he but, sing? Yeah. Yeah. He's got a great voice. Um, and he was doing a bit of dancing, so I'm like, okay, he can probably pull off Meal Bamboo. And at this point, he is old enough to logically have a couple of 10-year-olds. Right. And his name is being tossed around as a potential low down the list. For the next James Bond. If you're British, your name is being tossed around as Bond. Connection! Right? Oh, goodness. Anyway, um, he sings. He's still young enough to pull off of all of Dick Van Dyke's high kicks that he does throughout this movie. Those high kicks are a Dick Van Dyke staple, mm -hmm. so those are very important. But also, he, he's got this weird sweetness. On the occasion when I've seen him outside of Harry Potter, um... The couple of roles I have seen just clips of, he's got a nice bit of sweetness. So I think he would be able to pull off the, the sweet dad singing Hushabye Mountain to his kids, as well as the zany, nutty professor that <laughs> that Caractacus Pops really is. Let's face it, his most recent role was as Weird Al Yankovic film Weird. So yeah, I, I think he would be able to pull it off. I think he would be good, and I think it would be very, very interesting to see him with a magic car rather than on a broomstick. That would be interesting. <laughs> Magic's still abounding in his life, Magic's however. So, uh, Daniel Radcliffe's a good pick, one of, one that I hadn't considered and, and would be very, very interesting to see. Again, we don't want it to happen. No. But in our dream world here at Crossing <laughs> Ken and Anything in the Crossing Ken garage, we get to do what we want to do. It's our YouTube channel. <laughs> so, next is Truly Scrumptious. Again, with the names. I would like to point out that character, this whole character, not in the original Ian Fleming book. The mother of Jeremy and Jemima, the children, they, she is still alive in the book. In, the bon in this movie, they chose to have a James Bond reference by naming her Truly Scrumptious. And uh, the rest, as they say, is history. But yeah, truly movie invention. Yeah. The book has them all. It's a family YouTube channel, so we won't go into some of the James yeah, Bond names. Yeah, let's not. And, uh, and draw your own conjectures or go and read the original James Bond novels. But this is Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. So, connection. All right, truly scrumptious. My pick is a, a relatively new person that we have discovered. Um, she is currently on the Magnum Re P.I. reboot. And that's Perdita Weeks. Um, exquisite actress. She does a really good job with some of the action films, uh, the action stunts that she's doing in Magnum. And uh, I, I just, she comes off so very classy, especially in the first season of Magnum. Uh, I really feel like that, probably with a wig, because she's got really short hair right now, but I think she could pull off 
the Perdita Weeks. If you haven't seen her or heard of her, go check out the Magnum P.I. reboot. It's now on NBC. But it was previously on CBS. I'm not sure where you would stream it now, so either check Paramount Plus or Peacock. Um, I do really like that choice, though. I love Perdita Weeks. Um, again, I went with somebody that many people may not have thought of in this role. I went with Elizabeth Olsen. Um... She, I know she can sing, for one. She was in I Saw the Light with uh, Tom Hiddleston. Right. As uh, Mrs. Hank Williams Sr. Mm -hmm. um, and she did all of her own singing for that, so I know that she can carry a tune, if nothing else. Um, she also, very clearly, as evidenced by Wanda's character arc in the MCU, can play a motherly figure. Well, especially so, if you go back to WandaVision. Especially if you take from WandaVision and not Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Um, <laughs> stop that. But also, Elizabeth Olsen is just one of those actresses that no matter what I've seen her in, I've loved her. She does have an air of class to her because mm -hmm. she is a little bit of Hollywood royalty right. having been... Certainly. Like, just in these last few years, she's become one of the hottest names in Hollywood. So I legit think she would be able to pull off the classy, truly scrumptious. And as far as, like, age stuff goes, I think she's either the same age or a year younger than Daniel. So they'd be around the right age to be two people falling in love. That's a good pick. So, yeah. I'd love to hear her sing sometime. You need to send me that clip. Perfect. Okay, next. One of the f best, best characters, in my opinion, yes. is the grandpa. Now, certainly you, you want to go with Caractacus, and you certainly want to see he and Truly do the whole falling in love thing. But there are a couple of incredibly cool comic um, standouts mm -hmm. on in the film. Uh, the, the, the grandpa in this one is exquisite. Originally uh, played by Lionel Jeffries. Lionel Jeffries. Um, so you you got to make sure, again, you cannot ever recast this. Please. But my kind of, this was a little bit out of the box. However, I'm picking John Larroquette. <gasps> oh! John Larroquette as the, I can see him go posh, posh, traveling <laughs> like the traveling like for can me. Can he say? Uh, yes, he has been on Broadway before. Oh, yeah, he? I think so. Um, please uh, comment below if you think I'm wrong about that, but I think he has been on Broadway. Um, okay. I love that pick. I mean, I, John Larroquette is my boy, so... We just, we like him in so many things. Go back to the Dean demo, and we talk a little bit about John Larroquette there, um, but he's also got a new reboot of Night Court that he was an original star of that we really, really enjoy. Not everybody in our family does, but we really, really enjoy because it does a great job of paying homage to the original television show, which I adored. And also, we love John Larroquette. And we love John Larroquette. <laughs> we do. I love that pick. Thank you. Thank I you. love that pick. I do like mine just a little bit more, however. Um, okay. <laughs> Hence your picking it. Hence my picking it. Okay, so I went with Kevin Klein. Awesome. He, he is a former Broadway star. Half of the stuff on his IMDb page is musicals. He was in The Pirates of Penzance, mm -hmm. I believe is what mm -hmm. it's called. Um, also, most recently, he was in uh, the Beauty and the Beast live-action reboot as Maurice, as Belle's gotcha. father. And they actually wrote a song just so Kevin Klein could sing. Incredible actor. Disney actually learned from their mistakes with Beauty and the Beast on that because Kevin Klein played Phoebus in The Hunchback of Notre Dame and they didn't let him sing. Oh, disgraceful. Disgraceful. Horrible. Bad Disney, but we'll discuss that when we get to the Disney videos later on, hopefully this year. Um, but anyway, Kevin Klein, he can sing. I think he can pull off the struggling life. I know, I know he can do a British accent if he isn't actually British. I'm not sure if he is or not, but I've heard him do a British accent, so I don't think it would be that hard for him to pull off. Um, he's a fantastic actor, also. Um, both comedic and dramatic, so he'd be able. Like I could just see him pleading down to Daniel Gr Radcliffe, "It's me, it's your father, Caractacus." <laughs> so it's oh, the more I envision that scene, and then Dad, Daniel, just going, "Grandpa, what are you doing up there?" So just cracks me up thinking about it. So yeah, Kevin Klein, I think he would be a fantastic grandpa. If I can take an aside, mm -hmm. Kevin Klein was the best pick for Artemis Gordon in the Wild Wild West reboot. The film was terrible. Kevin Klein's performance, however, redeemed it a little bit. 
uh, he was he was I think he was exquisite many of my generation I would probably that. know him from the film 30 something which is one of the the his standout roles dramatic roles uh, when he first began also uh, many in, in in my generation realized that he's he's successfully been married to Phoebe Cates from uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High for a very very long time uh, a, a incredible everything look outside looking in that they have a good solid marriage and they have been married for a very very long time uh met on set kevin klein that's a wonderful pick absolutely thank wonderful you. pick for grandpa thank you so we get to the next character and in the original movie this character was played by a bond baddie you want to hear him say no mr bond i expect you to die gert frobe gert frobe okay just making sure i pronounced that last goldfinger time. If you didn't realize it, Please. was the Baron in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. I didn't the first time I saw this movie. Like, when you told me, I went, that's not the guy that tried to kill Sean Connery. It's, it's, it, it's, and he does a very, very good so job good. in this role. I mean, so he good. is over the top, which is exactly <laughs> what the role calls for. But he plays it close enough to the vest to be believable in a fantasy world. Mm -hmm. So, Gert Frobe did a beautiful job. My pick, however, I have chosen someone that is a somewhat younger, and I've never really even seen him act, but I love the things that he does on YouTube with his music in a car with a, you know, singer or whatever. It's late, late night show, I'm not, however many lates there was, James Corden, the host of one of the late shows, I'm not sure that he's doing that anymore. That's not a bad pick. He... I, he did a great job in Into the Woods, in my opinion. That's the only thing I've really ever seen him in. He played the baker in the um, film version of Into the Woods, and he did a fairly good job. Everything else I've seen him in is a little iffy. But you know what? He's playing the bad guy, so it's okay if he's a little iffy. Yeah, most of the things that I've seen him do have really been kind of over the top anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, I love the musical things that he does in it anyway, and he seems to be a pretty good singer, and he has to have at least... Uh, the the Baron has one song with uh, with the Baroness, and so uh, yeah, James Corden is my pick. I, I I just think he I could see him in that crown. I could see him in the mustache. I just it's it's it was he was an easy pick for me. So. Yeah, I I like that pick. Thanks. I do. I I genuinely do. Um, I actually went with kind of someone who is how do I phrase this? Over the top is the name of the game with this particular actor. I chose Jack Black. Thank you. Good, I, good pick. I could just see. I don't know how Chuchi Face would go. I feel like it would probably have to either be rocked up or it would just become this giant, broad, almost operatic comedy thing because that's that's how I've heard Jack Black sing. Um, I, but I do know that he has a fantastic voice. He yes. did all of his own singing in School of Rock. Um, and he has a band. Tenacious D, baby. And so, um, I know Jack Black. And again, Broad is the name of his game. I love him in Kung Fu Panda as the voice of Poe. I adore him in the Jumanji films, as I already mentioned. School of Rock, he's fantastic in. He's just a great big goofball in most of what I've seen him in. And I love every minute of it. And so, him as the Baron, it's, it, it was a no-brainer for me. I loved him in High Infidelity with John Cusack. Uh, and it's about a record store. <laughs> anyway, yeah, um, Jack Black. That's a great pick, Kristen. Fantastic. Thank you. I okay, keep doing this. I don't yes, know why. Yes, you do. Just <laughs> edit some of them out. That's all I can tell you. Next, we come to the Baroness. Now we're getting to some of the minor characters. The Baroness really doesn't play all that kind of a big role, but it's one of those. You know, everything from here on out, with the exception of one, uh, really has to be a, a actor or actress. Who could just play it over the top? These are extreme characters that kind of show a sanity for Caractacus and truly, <laughs> these guys are nuts. Okay, so and and it's a fantasy world that's 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 done very very well and just kind of a throwback to Nazi, you know, the Nazi regime and everything with their accents, Bulgaria. I, I just. It's, it's beautifully done in the original, um, but my, my pick for the Baroness, who I don't know that we ever really get a name for. Um, no, she's just the Baroness. Yeah. Ashley Tisdale. Um, she, we know she can sing. She's put out several albums. Uh, she was in a high school musical as, a, in my opinion, a character very similar to the Baroness. 
Um, so she's already played that kind of high-strung, uh, over-the-top, vain, very vain uh, type. Well, and I can see her in those floor-length uh, pigtails, very, very easy. <laughs> um, so that's Ashley Tisdale. I just I think she would make a good one. She's my pick. I like that pick. Thanks. I you really do. <laughs> I'm probably gonna get in trouble for this pick. Um, I've chosen Scarlett Johansson. And he's kind of out of the box. Out of the box. She can sing for one. Yes. Should she face. Also, which, again, the Baroness only has one role in this film, and it's to either be attempted murder by the Baron, right. which, unfortunately, um, is a plot point in this movie, and then sing Chuchi Face. So, I went with Scarlett Johansson. She can sing. She can sing beautifully. Yes, She's put well. out a John Waits cover album, I right. believe is what it was, and she sang in the film's Sing as well as the credit song for the live action remake of the jungle book so i know she can sing without a doubt but the level of comedy in my head with her scarlett johansson everybody knows scarlett johansson is probably one of the most beautiful women on the planet and her trying desperately to get jack black to love her and then also just being all lovey-dovey with him during Chuchy Face. The amount of comedy with that, I just, I can't handle it. I can see the outtakes already. It's it, so it, good. It would be a roll all of, uh, you'd have to have one whole disc just for the outtakes from that one from scene. that one scene with Scarlett Johansson and Jack Black, just pretty much anything they would be doing together. Like, it would just be golden. And here's the thing, I feel like she would play it straight. I feel like she would play it straight, not over as over the top as um, some other actresses might go, because they might be trying to meet Jack. She would be playing it completely straight, which would just make it that much better. Yeah, you really do need to go look at Scarlett Johansson's body of work outside of the MCU. Um, Black Widow is a very unique character. We've loved her in that role, but she has been in some incredibly good other films. Uh, that have has shown the range and diversity that she has. I think I think she's partnered with a couple of guys, and they have a band. I, I need to do your research on that one, but I, I'm pretty yeah. sure that that's it. Uh, music available on Spotify or any of the other streaming services that you so uh, listen to. So, but, yeah. but good pick. Good. Yeah. I kind of out of the box, and it would again that that chemistry between her and Jack Black would be a very very interesting B roll to be able to see. <laughs> so. Okay, next, the most hated person in this entire film. I mean, you hate this cat worse than you do the Baron or Baroness. They're just kind of fruity. This guy is Satan himself. I mean, he's just, he's evil, he's dark, he uses candy to catch kids. I think he was the inspiration for Stranger Danger. That's a very, very good point. But he was also the inspiration for Marilyn Manson. If you look at some of Marilyn Manson's early covers... Uh, of the records of the CDs, you're like, dude, he's the candy, he's the he's the child catcher from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Be honest, did he give you nightmares as a child? Uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> this this is this is one of those moments, kind of like Jaws. You know, the music starts playing, the dee -dee 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 -dee, and you're like, ah, I can't see him, I can't see him, I can't see him. <laughs> is it over? <laughs> The child catcher is a hated, hated character. <laughs> the gentleman who played him was a professional ballet person. I can't remember. By the name of Robert Helpman. Thank you. Um, and and to my knowledge, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang is the only film he ever did. But he did a great job, such a good job in this film mm -hmm. that everybody who watches the film hates his guts. The minute he walks on the screen. The minute he comes on screen. Ah! His whole role is to catch children in this land where children have been banned. Mm -hmm. The Baron and Baroness don't have children. They're they big like children, children themselves. They don't like children. So the villages have all taken their children and sequestered them in caves and in other places. And the child catcher comes on out on the scene every once in a while. I smell children. And you're just like, oh, I hope I don't smell like that. So, but anyway, exquisitely done by the actor who is uh, who plays him, Mr. Heltman. And so, but my pick to replace him in our version of the recast it 
is Adam Driver. Ooh. Adam Driver oh, from the oh. prequel, sequel, yeah. whichever, 7, 8, and 9 Star <laughs> Wars is Ben Solo. Solo. Adam Driver. He is in a film right now called 65 Million Years just, Ago. Yeah, 65 Million Years Ago. That, that really, really, uh, I it took me a minute to recognize him. But I think, personally, let him get that long, stringy hair going thing. Slim up a little Slim bit. Slim up just a little bit. Um, bulk <laughs> down just a little bit, perhaps. Um, but I think Adam Driver would, would fit the role. I think he's menacing enough, as seen in at least the first of the uh, Episode 7 of, of Star Wars. So, uh, Adam Driver, my, my pick. That would terrify me. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Adam Driver is a little bit scary in general. Right, yes. J just because he does have a deep voice. He'd have to pitch his voice up a little bit. But I think I think he could pull it off. But I, again, I might get in a little bit of trouble for this. I picked Elijah Wood. He's skinny. He's got those giant blue eyes. And let's be honest. Outside of Lord of the Rings, everything Elijah Wood wants to do is weird. It is. Every yes, you're film right. you're I have wrong. looked up since Lord of the Rings in, on his IMDb page, we've got uh, like Sin City, um, a horror movie called Come to Daddy. Like It's just weird stuff, guys. I, I love Elijah Wood in Lord of the Rings. Don't get me wrong. But it's weird stuff on his IMDb page. And so I think he would pull this off. I can see him in the little top hat, yep. prancing about going, children, children, lollipops, like that. Okay, but, stop. The nightmares are coming again. <laughs> Sorry, Daddy. It's okay. But, yeah, I think Elijah Wood would pull it off very, very well, if only because those big blue eyes of his, when he's got his scruff on and put the put a stringy wig on him, like that. Well, one connection also, Lord of the Rings, Peter Jackson owns, owns. a Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, he, one he, of the original cars from yes. the film. And on he, the Lord of the Rings set, he took all the hobbits riding around in it with the top down. He actually, on the set of The Hobbit as well, he would give Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman almost every single day rides to the sound stage in, in Chitty Chitty, Chitty, Chitty bang, bang Bang. Roll it along the hills of New Zealand in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Peter Jackson, you are living my dream. Uh, I can't imagine <laughs> that they would sing the song necessarily. Oh, but one might do it at least once. At least once. At, at least, least once. once. Mr. Jackson, if you happen to watch, please, video. Video of you singing Chitty Chitty Bang video Bang. Video of it. Car. So, please, we'd please. love that. Yes, Love that. Thank you. Ex excellent pick. Uh, hey, Elijah, you're absolutely right. He has chosen some really different roles um, from a, really a big departure from Frodo mm -hmm. um, from The Lord of the Rings, being this titular he hero, uh, he moving into some bad guys. really, really weird stuff. Mostly Just really bad. weird stuff. Last go, one. Go check out his IMDb page and, and see for yourself. Okay. Last one. Well, last one. In the original film, The Toy Maker was played by British comedian Benny Hill. Now, he had a TV show that ran almost as long as Doctor Who back in the day. Uh, it was just this slapstick variety show, really kind of bizarre at times. Almost Monty Python, but not quite. Uh, it was certainly a competitor for Monty Python. Benny Hill, go check that him out on YouTube. He was the original toy maker in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Benny Hill did a great job playing it straight, which at that time was such a departure from what your zaniness that you would usually see on his television show, only on the BBC. We didn't never had it in America, as far as I'm uh, I know of, uh, other than in reruns or or like on PBS. So Benny Hill, go check out his uh, his TV show from the 60s and 70s. My pick for the toy maker is another British comedian who is also known for being pretty zany. Uh, my pick is Rowan Atkinson, better known as Mr. Bean. Wasn't he also the voice of Zazu in I Lion think, King? I think he was one of the voices in the original Lion King as well. So uh, Rowan Atkinson is, he has an incredible body of work uh, other than, and in fact, he was in a James Bond film with Roger Moore. I want to say it was uh, Spy Who Loved Me. Uh, Rowan Atkinson was in a James Bond film. Uh, hence a connection for me for our recast it, but uh, connection nonetheless. 
So Rowan Atkinson, Mr. Bean, he's been typecast so much as Mr. Bean, that's where he made his money, and he doesn't have a problem with that. He's had two or three Mr. Bean movies, and they're hilarious, usually pretty clean as well, uh, kind of on the dumb side, but, you know, let's face it, have you seen what's coming out in Hollywood as far as comedies go? Valid. That's my pick, Rowan Atkinson. I think he would do a great job, and plus it would show his stretching as an actor uh, in a uh, more dramatic, serious role as opposed to what you're used to seeing him in. Rowan Atkinson, Mr. Right. Bean. I like that pick. Thanks. Um, so I kind of went with somebody who would also maybe have to stretch just a little bit, but not because he's a comedian, because he usually plays the bad guy. And again, Daddy, this will make you happy. It's a Bond connection because he played a Bond baddie in Pierce Brosnan's The World Is Not Enough. I am talking about Robert Carlyle. Robert Carlyle. We, or I know him best from the TV show Once Upon a Time Exquisite. where he played Rumpelstiltskin. Mm, loved him so much in that show. Really go check that show out, especially if you like fantasy and fairy tales. It is a Once Upon a Time. The show started on ABC and uh, they had to kind of redo themselves in their last couple of seasons. But again, if you like fairy tales and fantasy, um, in a modern day twist, this is really, really a good show. We loved it. And Robert Carlyle was phenomenal in it. He is, if, if he wasn't the best actor, he was second best. But that, a once upon a time conversation is for another video. Another video. But, um, yeah. So Robert Carlyle, he has, when he's not, in once upon a time, when he's not being skinny, he has this bizarre tenderness. Very sweet, very gentle, very kind. But I know for a fact that he can pull off the slightly timid because one of the attributes of his rumple was that he was a bit of a coward. Mm -hmm. And what I remember best about the toy maker is him coming in with the hunched shoulders and kind of sidling towards uh, the Baron as he's bringing in the birthday presents at the end of the film. And so I just, and also I think I know Robert Carlyle can do a variety of accents, so I have zero doubt he'd be able to pull off the slightly Germanish version or German Scottish, however he wants to maneuver his accent. Bulgaria, Bulgaria, whatever. Vul Bulgaria, that. Bulgaria, that's Bulgaria. what it was. Bulgaria, something like that. But um, yeah, I think Robert Carlyle would do a very good job, and also it would be a wonderful chance for fans of his to see him as a straight up good guy because I want to I want to not have conflicting feelings about Robert Carlyle in just one film one thing just one thing where I see him not be a straight up bad guy however if your Leaning. child catcher got sick <laughs> Robert Carlyle twin brother bring on coming the in bring and on. do both roles how cool would that be just that? paint him up as Rumpelstiltskin. Just make Rumpelstiltskin just, just, for once upon a time be the child catcher. Because quite honestly, I think that's where they got the inspiration for the role. Robert Carlyle was gifted enough of an actor. He could pull off both of those roles. And I think it would be a unique twist for our recast it if you had the bad guy and the toy maker. Be twin brothers. Be twin brothers. Well, there you, know you have what? it, first here, only at Crossing King. Well, you know what? Anything goes in reboots. Anything we, goes we in can make, We can just lose the whole framing device, make everything real rather than a story Caractacus is playing, because that's what the book did. Right. The, I mean, the books do there, take there, t they do take some liberties with the film. There was so. no framing device in the original mm. book. It was just straight up adventure time. Woo! But that's it, guys. That is our recast it for Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. What do you think? It's one of those most beloved films um, that has incredible actors that are still, some of which, you know, some of them are not acting as much today. Dick Van Dyke is still alive at 91. Congratulations, Mr. Van Dyke. We love you in your so original much. television show and all of your body of work that you've done over the course of 91 years. Dick Van Dyke was my childhood. So. In incredible. I mean, it's just incredible actor. Um, but we feel like we've got some decent ideas. What do you think? Let us know down in the comments section what, who you would cast in the roles that we've discussed today for Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Or if we should just mix and match our casts. Just mix them up. 
Sure. Have some be others, blah, 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 blah. Or maybe, you know, <laughs> Grandpa is played by Caractacus. Maybe Hugh Jackman plays both roles. We've gone <laughs> no, down a lot of no, rabbit trails no, there. No, no. Moving on. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us here at Cross and Ken. Be sure to like the video. Ring that notification bell. So that you know next time we upload. Uh, comment because we do really want to hear from you guys. Share so that your other friends can see what's happening here at Cross and Ken. And be sure to subscribe. Subscribe. Please be sure to subscribe. We love you guys. Thank you for checking back with us here in the Cross and Ken garage. We'll see you in two weeks. Uh, two weeks. I'm Randy. I'm Kristen. Later. Bye.